Yeah, watch it. Uh, got the verse on the track. This is that on the boards. Church. This is my girl. Wow. Yeah, the statistics shows my ballistic flows in a rape get cake. Not with candles that spark your teeth. Them uh uh O's. I'm so ready. How to pack my clothes? I'm so happy with no D. How them boys? I rock them gators more than gun beat boys. I'm the real raw deal. Y'all just steal decoys. So and yeah, it it, it comes it transform from fiction into realism even though it is a work of fiction for that green like the fuck break no not from new orleans but can you see me homie in oh my check check one two if it ain't a check a text that's all i'm gonna do my check check one two if you ain't talking dollars i can't understand you my check check one two if it ain't a check a text that's all i'm gonna do my check Check one two. Yeah. If you ain't talking dollars, Let's I go. can't understand you. Yeah. Look around, left, right, up and down. So in a time before everything starts, and the second book kind of gets into the very beginning of it, and then the third book kind of ends up the first phase of what happened. My target audience when I wrote it in my head was the um, were basically teenage girls that had read Twilight and were sorry that it was over. From the season. And the, the animals from being asymmetric. But you know, you, you're the bus driver. Right. You know, yeah, there he is. You know, I have like a cool, like a big boy. My check, check one two. If you ain't talking dollars, I can't understand you. My check, check one two. If it ain't a check a text, that's all I'm gonna do. So one two. My check. Check one two. If you ain't talking dollars, I can't. Thank you, thank you. Welcome to another great show of APN TV Media. As a matter of fact, we got a, a lot in store for you today. As usual, we always have something good. This time, we have a, a, a young lady who, I mean, she is awesome because today's topic is going to be fiction and fantasy. Okay, she has a way to combine the two, but that was that is today's topic. Uh, her name is. Um, let me get it right. Oh, wait, 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 how are you doing? Excellent. How are you doing today? Ah, uh, doing fine. Missing Bob. Yes, but Bob's where? He, but I think Florida. he's wrestling alligators. That's what he's going to yes, do. Yeah. Hopefully, he takes some pictures. He's bringing us back some shoes. I heard. Really? <laughs> <laughs> what I'm talking about. <laughs> hey, you know what? Be before we go on, I, I see the reason why I pause because I, I uh, um, the one thing about it is this author, she has written over, no, I say 10. I believe she's written 10 books or, or, yeah, written 10 books, and she has more books in, in the making. She's a career author, how about that? A career author, that's what I'm talking about, okay? And, and, and you know what, the, uh, uh, you know what, let me, let me do this. Uh, um, and I'll see if I can get the name, the last name right. Her name is Tracy Falby, Tracy Falby. And Tracy Falby, her, you know what, I'm, I'm going to tell everything about her, but I'm going to let you tell me a little bit about, matter of fact, you tell me about her. How about that? Well, or tell, tell us. Well, actually, we're from Michigan, and she's also from Michigan, Mount Pleasant, actually. Okay. Born and raised there, but she loved the circus so much that she decided to move away, and she said that she moved away for two years to Las Vegas, so maybe that was her circus. I'm ready to find <laughs> out, that's for certain. And then she moved to Chico, California, where she got her journalism degree. And that's what started, really? and her journalism degree was for, uh, based upon fiction is what she wanted to write. And fantasy, well, I don't know what came first, her fantasies and she wrote her fiction, 
or, or what? The, but I, I'm really excited to meet her. The chicken and the egg thing, huh? The chicken and the egg, all right. That's what I'm talking <laughs> about. Well, I'll tell you what, without further ado, let, let's, let's go into our PSA commercial, and we'll be right back after this. Yeah, watch it. Mm. Got the worst on the track. Set on the boards. Church. This is the market. Wow. Yeah. Welcome back, welcome back, yes, yes. You know what, without further ado, let me bring her in. And her name is Tracy Falby. Come on, Tracy. Hey, How you doing? Hello. Hey, thank you. Oh, this is so hello to everybody yeah. in the family. <laughs> yes, yes, Tracy Falby. We have a lot to talk about because, see, I mean, 10 books? I mean, you're definitely a career author. I knew you were a career author after, maybe, uh, uh, after the second book. Mm -hmm. But I figure, you know, uh, uh, you know what? I'll tell you what. Come on, let's, let's go have a seat. That's terrible memory to have her standing and we're giving an interview. All right, you follow me. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yes, yes. Um, you know what? It, oh, my gosh, you're dynamic. You are dynamic. Well, thank you. I uh, have a lot of books in my head, I guess. Yes. Ten have escaped. But, but one of the things about, I love how you, uh, uh, I, I checked out your, your site, your website mm -hmm. and everything, and I'm like, oh my gosh, get out of here. And, and, and when we talked earlier, I noticed that uh, the, the uh, um, I wanted to call it a dimension or, or, or another, uh, uh, what, do you, what do you call the movie? It's not just dimension, another realm. When, when you, uh, uh, everything that you absorb or learn or, or your surroundings or whatever you get involved in that you, you put it into writing. Am I saying that right or, yeah. well, or can you, you know, say it better than that? You can say it just better. Just about any element of my life uh -huh. might get distilled down into something that happens, whether it's just a trivial mundane thing or some yes. exciting episode from my youth. <laughs> 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 I don't have too many exciting episodes at this stage in my life. Oh. But, except for this. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Today's this exciting. Is a, it's got to be Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You know, the, uh, um, I know she mentioned that you grew up in, in, in Mount Pleasant mm -hmm. in Michigan. So do, do I say Michigander? I yeah, Michigander is what Michigander? I know. Yeah, so. Yes, yes. I, I mean, well, I'm also being a mission gander. So, what so someone was telling me, being a mission gander is because uh, um, I've been here, I guess, 20 years now. It's the longest I lived or, or around in any it's state or, or country on the planet. Yeah, I think you're stuck now. Yes, and I love it. I'm stuck. Yeah, literally. So, and I love it. I love it here. And, and um, I mean, your road trip here, how was that? It was fine. You know, I battled through the I-94 corridor, which is oh. sort of nerve-wracking. You, even compared to... Are they still working on it? No, it's just all the semi-trucks on it. Cars really? are just so, feel so little on it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you feel oh. like you have all these huge behemoth trucks all over the place. Oh and my goodness. Hey, I, you, you know what, I, I really don't, I mean, uh, driving is a necessity, but I, I really don't like driving much. I mean, it's, you, it's, Everything's too congested on, on a road now. It's too congested. I remember back then they used to take the roads and, and they, if you know, they always add an extra road. But every time you add an extra one, it seems like more cars come out. Mm -hmm. It's kind of weird. There's been studies that the mm -hmm. bigger the road, you just make a bigger traffic jam. So what happens when they start with those, uh, you know, 
increase the, you know, the, uh, the little cars, making those little cars down. Uh-huh. And uh, I wonder what happened there. We have a bunch of them little ones running around. I don't, I don't know. know. I really don't have that problem. It seems like, well, I see, I know I own the road. The problem is, is that everybody else out there doesn't. But outside of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not driving next to you. That's right. Uh, I'll leave first. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, let me, uh, 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 you know, one of the things about you was in California. And you know what? Michelle, I'm going to leave one of the first questions to you. Well, I heard that, well, you were in Las Vegas. So that had to have been a really exciting time. So is a lot of the spin on your books evolved or around that circus part of your life? Uh, there are elements, definitely, because I, I like to have, you know, parties and shows in my novels, you know, because there can be exciting things going on or people have to go out to battle soon and risk their lives. Yes. And so they have a big party before they do that because, you know, live the, today for tomorrow you might die. Right, so I, I always kind of have the element, Anna. I sneak in in some of my stories. So there's gambling, you know. People have gambled throughout the ages, so sometimes I have gambling games in there, and it's just part of building the, the world and the setting and making it feel real. You know. Now, you said you were in journalism, and you were a historian also? Well, that was my minor in college was okay. history. I've always loved history, and um, I've studied many different periods in history and cultures. And so that, of course, is helping you write in this other era. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And uh, for the series we're going to talk about today, the first book, I uh, was always fascinated by Renaissance Europe in the early modern period. So that's why I selected that As well, a matter of fact, yeah. that was what I was going to ask you about. Your, your new book, uh, uh, um, I guess, is that the newest one? The, the, the where, um, uh, it's a the werewolf, second newest. Where, um, yeah. Am I saying this right? Werewolf, uh, Thaw, uh, Thaw, T H A L. Is mm -hmm. that right? It's Were Lord Thaw. Where, I keep yeah. saying it. Oh, He's I'm a sorry. werewolf. Were, were Lord, Were Lord yeah. Thaw, yeah. W E R E L O R D. Yes. Were Lord Thaw, T H A L. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, yes. And, and, and uh, um, it's a Renaissance. A Renaissance Werewolf Tale. Look, I'm asking I'm ask the author. Will you hold up the book? <laughs> That's okay, I know it. If you hold up the book, I'm sure our female uh, viewers would love to see the cover. Ooh. This is Thal, everyone. Yes, yes, I'm sure we'll probably have it on screen also as yeah. well. It yeah. took so me a while to get past the cover, but it's a really excellent book on the inside also. Well, actually, the cover's yes. showing him without clothes on because he learns rather quickly that if he changes into a werewolf with his clothes on, he's going to ruin his clothes. And Even more exciting. There's no department stores in the 16th century, so you got to <laughs> keep oh, track so you, of your clothes. So you mean to tell me I got, it's a woman thing here. Did you notice that, that the first thing is that it was talking about my clothes being on, and you know what I did? No, I'm a man. I started looking at <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> That's a I did. But, <laughs> but anyway, yeah, the book is a great book. Uh, um, it's, it's a beautiful cover, okay? So no, no, don't everybody think that he, uh, um, that is a total naked man per se standing on the cover. You know what? You saw it before, but we're going to show it again. Chest so, up. So everybody understand that. Okay, Chest men, up. we can read this book too, all right? So it's not showing him, you know, we, I'm going to leave it alone for you women. Well, actually, men and women yes. both uh -huh. enjoy my fiction. It's, it's not really skewed one way or the other. Yes. It's so very let's, entertaining. Let, let's, let's step away from, from the man with the no clothes <laughs> thing. Yeah. Watch it. Mm. Got the whistle on the track. Is that on the boys? Church. This is the market. Wow. Yeah. transfer complete. The world has turned against this. They have not done it. Oh my God. There has been...
right. Forgive me, Father, or I have sinned. You can guess it, See? but I've been guessing wrong, so I have to keep reading. No, you said it, no, you said, you said it right. You said it right. That's exactly what it is. You did a great job on it. Yes, you did a great job on it. Yes. Like it. There are, you know, the research for it, you know, mm -hmm. there are actual historical events I'm referring to in there, because a lot of, in Where Lord Thal, most of the action centered in uh, Prague, which is now in the Czech Republic. And uh, at that time, it's kind of at the heart of the Catholic and Protestant conflict. Mm -hmm. uh, the Archbishop of Prague has just been reinstalled by the Roman Church. And uh, Prague has been, for the 100 years previous to this, this starts in 1561, it's been a real hotbed of rebellion, especially to Roman Catholic rule. So now the Roman Catholic Church is really trying to put its foot down and reclaim this territory because it's the capital of the Holy Roman Empire, but it's kind of stopping being Holy Roman. So <laughs> they got to try and turn that back around. And, oh, the facts and the history yeah. are just altruistic. I mean, yeah. it, it really brings you into the book. My uh, been around the Renaissance. We talked about Renaissance mm -hmm. festivals, so it really brings that all to life. And that, I think that it's the fire inside the book that I feel that I find. Yeah. I find the action in the book for the men. I mean, we do, you know, uh, men, you know, we do have our romantic moments, you know, and, and you bring that to attention in the book as well. Uh, 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 but you also bring the action. Uh, you you give your book a a a climax. I mean, you oh, actually yeah. rev up the readers, give give them a a, a story, a base storyline to start off with, and and, and then you. You actually, before you even, and what I like about it is before you even get to the middle of the book, you're already hyped up, you're already revved up, but you can't wait. You can't well, wait. you know, any author is going to strive to do that. You know, you ha start out with your first problem that sort of drives the story and hopefully grabs a reader's interest. And then, you know, you have your end point, mind the climax, but, and then all the stuff that happens in between. Because I like to introduce supporting characters, have a couple subplots. And, uh, Very good. Just, I don't, especially when I'm editing, I go through and I try and make sure the pacing's good. I like to have action, but mm -hmm. you can't just be breakneck you all the time. Yes. Sometimes you got to slow down. Very good. And take a little time. Sometimes I'm just having fun with some characters. Sometimes I'm doing something real serious, mm -hmm. and then you know, keep it going. Yes. Kind of like you'd imagine a good movie. Like musical head it flies and falls and takes you toward an emotional place. Yeah, it's like, yeah. Goes, there's some music that's like, when is it going to end? No. <laughs> well, how long have you been writing? Well, I first, in 1997, seriously told myself that, you know, I'd always had the dream of writing fiction and being a novelist. I'd always imagined that for myself, uh -huh. which, lucky me. <laughs> And so I sat down and I, I just started uh, writing almost every day and I kept at it for many, many years. And, and what the was novel your first book? My first book, Union you of Renegades. Mind, I was thinking of that. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. called Union of Renegades. It launches one of my other series, which is a, a straight up epic fantasy. It's not historical, it's a total imagined world, and that's the Riss Chronicles. And the Riss are a mm -hmm. magical race that rule over the humans. Yeah. You know, uh, um, before I get ahead of myself. So next year will be 20 years that I've been writing fiction. Excellent. 20 years? I know. It, it kind of, a few years ago when I realized I hit like year 16, it blew my mind because I didn't realize it. I, I, have, I had I, never stopped to count the years I've been doing it. So I just want to have two questions on, on this one for you. <laughs> okay. 
Um, when you, what inspired you to, to, to write your very first book? What inspired you? Well, it's, uh, you know, without spending a lot of time going into what Union and Renegades is about, it came from a place in me where I, like, felt kind of like I, my life wasn't going anywhere and following the rules wasn't working and I really needed to just break out and just do my thing even though it was kind of crazy. Okay. And so that's kind of the emotional thing that I drew into, drew upon in the story. And when I talk to people that want writing advice, for fiction especially, but it applied to nonfiction too. It's like, mm -hmm. you want to make your reader feel something, so you have to be feeling something inside. You got to have Very good. maybe some lesson you learned or just some frustration or joy or just whatever you're trying to do. You got to feel something when you're writing. Because if you're not feeling something when you're writing it, it's how's it going to make a feeling? Yeah. Yes. Yes, that's what I call dry books. It's just dry. After a while, they can't, they can't even get past the first 10 pages because everything is just blah because the mm -hmm. author, which is the creator of their mm -hmm. own work, uh, uh, didn't put their own emphasis in it. It's like yeah. reading a, a thesis. Yeah, because sometimes yes. people, mm -hmm. they'll have the story idea and it's cool, but you need to inject that feeling. Yes, it has to be a part you of you. You have to feel Especially something fiction. Yes. and yes. channel characters because some of my characters... I'll put thought into, oh, I want this woman to be this way or this mm -hmm. man to be that way. But my best main characters, they're just people out there in the universe and they get into my brain and they- But you can see it. Yeah. You can see, you can actually see it. Yeah. And when you're writing it, when you, that's where I was going to. Now you're gonna make me have three questions, but here's the second one. From what inspired you to write your first book mm -hmm. is what inspired you to keep on writing. Well, for me, writing's my creative outlet if I, you know, I've had ups and downs where I, years where I'm writing every day and then times when I'm not writing for months. Mm -hmm. But it's my creative outlet and if I'm not doing it, I won't be happy. I have to be sorting through my ideas and my feelings mm -hmm. and creating stories out of them. And um, as a series writer, you know, not that I'm rich and famous, but I do actually have some fans and sometimes mm -hmm. you have people email When's that next book coming out? And you actually, you feel the pressure and you want to always, I want to always make my next book my best book. So I'm always trying for that. And, uh, it's a personal motivation and then once you get your work out there and you have some people enjoying your work, there's that larger motivation of like, gosh, there's people out there that, you know, they're waiting for that email from me to say, I got some <laughs> Well, Tracy, you. you have to tell me as a mother myself, how do you find time with two sons, correct? Yeah, I have two sons. How now. do you, in your busy schedule, yeah. find time to take time for yourself and write these books? Well, it's always a challenge for people, whether they have kids or not. You know, some people are, you know, work full time and it is, some people get really fussy about, oh, I gotta be in a certain place at a certain time when there can be no noise. And I say, try and work past that, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, get yourself some kind of portable means to write, whether it's a laptop or a little notebook or, I don't know, pen and paper, if that works <laughs> <laughs> for you. And uh, carry it with you and fit it in. Cause you know, my kids at soccer practice, well, I can sit there for an hour and write 500, 1,000 words. Uh, you can get it, you know, say, all right, for a lot of years when my kids were little, put the kids to bed and I have that hour or two, you know, instead of turn on the TV, you know, let's write for an hour or two and then I can relax. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of just pushing yourself, cut back on TV. Sometimes you have to cut back on socializing. Do you cut back on reading since you're writing? Um, it, it's an ebb and flow. Sometimes I'm reading a lot. I read okay. a lot of nonfiction. I'm usually in like two to four books at once. And um, right now I'm in a place where I'm kind of reading some more fiction. So sometimes I'm always reading and sometimes it's embarrassing. I might go two or three months without reading a book, but I've always been a reader my whole life. Now, when you start writing, do you write straight through to the end or do you find you do you get the writer's hump? I think that's what they call it, the writer's crutch or throughout well, a book? earlier in my writing career, sometimes mm -hmm. I would sort of paint myself into a corner and be like, oh dear, what happens next? And you might have to pause and 
there were times I'd have to just trash some chapters and start over, but um, the more you do it, the more I know how to plan things, and I just see it all, and I work towards it. So I don't get stuck too much anymore, because uh, a lot of people, because I've talked to a lot of aspiring writers asking for advice over the years, and they have this great idea for a start, and it's great, but maybe they don't have an idea for an end. And I always say, you don't start building the bridge to nowhere. Know where you're going. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah. So just yeah. even the, the details to work out, you might not know everything, but at least have some climax in mind, and that'll really help you, you know, know where you're going with your story. It, and, uh, uh, um, I, I know I'm, I'm, I'm throwing off an a, a instant uh, question, but this question is more like a statement. Because I think about, you know, people always talk about writer's block, writer's block. Mm -hmm. and, and then I, when I, when I uh, 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 realized, you know, after uh, uh, reading, reading uh, you know, uh, I got quite a bit into your, uh, uh, um, your newest book, and, and I checked on the other books. And I started, you know, uh, um, I started, start, and you can see your books are, are everywhere available, basically. Oh yeah, Amazon, I, any of the ebook retailers online, yes. and uh, print, uh, Amazon, Barnes and Noble website. You can walk into Barnes and Noble and ask for it, and they'll order it for okay. you. But you know, if you're an obscure indie author, they're not just buying it by the box, putting it on the shelves. But uh, maybe someday. Yes, but you know, that's actually with today's technology. I mean, that's, that's the way it is. Everything, you can order food online. So, mm -hmm. uh, uh, um, and, and here's the funny part, and I didn't know if you, you, you knew this or not, and I don't know if anybody else knew this or not, but Amazon has been physically uh, building, already create, they have already created their own physical bookstores. Yeah, I've heard they've. Yes, we're, we're supposed to have one down here, on, on, down Taylor in, in Michigan. Oh, really? I didn't know there was uh, one yes. here in this well, area. There's two so Planned. far in different states, but yes. Yeah. My, my daughter uh, 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 told me that, and I said, what? I said, oh, my gosh. I said, that just, just changes everything. But yeah. they said, that's like you, uh, Amazon, what they did was divorce one area of the, uh, 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 the bookstore publishing uh, uh, media area, and they remarried because they turned, remarried somebody else because... They said they weren't going to do that, and they were the global giants just to be online. But to them to create, and, and they have their own warehouse, but to create a physical bookstore, that's a, that, that's a game changer. Mm -hmm. So yes, for everyone. So as they're still building more of these stores, especially for this one's tailored for books, uh -huh. that it gives everyone an opportunity because like you are a, uh, uh, an indie author, right? Yeah, but I'm you did fantastic. I have my yes, own that company. You mm. Yes, so I, I'm very, very proud of you. We're all very, very proud of you. I'm mean, very proud of you. And, and, and you've gone forward, and these doors are available for those that go forward. And that's why, you know, um, basically when we were talking earlier, our own little, uh, 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 you know, communication chit chat about the uh, industry is where now you have to go uh, uh, boldly. Or on your own in faith, and, and you know what's funny is, yeah, you can. You did this from your heart, market. though. You, you oh, yeah. written a book from your heart. Mm -hmm. Okay, you had a passion about it. You know, the only step is uh, is better to share that passion with everybody else. Because uh, I usually tell myself, you know, because I spent several years with the query letters looking for agents. Because you yes. know, I just hey, I want a publisher. Who doesn't, in a way? But you know, when that didn't work out. I, mm -hmm. I wanted my art to be more than a box of paper in a drawer, so I just found ways to produce it. I taught myself how to make a book, and uh, then you know the internet and digital technology and ebook reading was just kind of coming along through that period. Nice. And it just the first time I put ebooks for sale on my website, I had no idea if anyone would buy them, and then just sales would start trickling in. From Yeah, watch it. Uh, got the verse on the track. Is that on the boards? Church. This is Lamar. Wow. Yeah.
So that is a craft that you automatically, and that's, that's a life God-given talent. That, and that's what I'm saying. Everybody can write a book, but it, it's, it's the gift of talent that gets a, a flourish in that craft from the education because you want to learn something to add to it. Mm -hmm. In your case, it's a part of you. Yeah, I just, the stories in me and I like to make stories and I want to share them with the world and the process of making them is my pleasure, you know. I actually mm -hmm. like my own books, you know. I, I don't know, that sounds conceited, but no, that's right. I make it because I want to make a story I like because even when I was a kid and I'd read a book and enjoy it and I think, oh, I want to make a book. I want to write a book too and enjoy it, you know. Well, can you imagine somebody mm -hmm. saying, I don't like my own book, but I want to publish it. And you'd be surprised if people actually says, I don't like my book, I'm not sure, I don't know, but I want to publish it and see if it'll make money. How? How, how was it going to do anything if you don't put nothing into it? Yeah. Well, it's, it's my entertainment to yes. create it. It's really my personal entertainment that, you know, some people might like. Mm -hmm playing a, you know, a role-playing video game or doing other things like that, where I, for my fun time, I like to make stories. Well, Tracy, I ask you this, uh, when you write your book, of course you go back and you proof it. Oh, that's... What, what takes you longer, to write down the words, the idea, and get the picture there on paper, or to go back and proof it and add and delete? It's probably equal, like, com I call it, like, composition and drafting stage, and then... I do like three stages of editing, you know, because the first stage is kind of like a rewrite where I'm cleaning mm -hmm. it up, spotting problems, you know, if something was too draggy, trying to pick up the pace and cut. And then uh, the second stage is kind of language fine tuning, you know, because over the years I, I tend to be a little wordy, so I've been trying to tighten my prose and make my words more impactful mm -hmm. and uh, then the third stage is a lot of the proofreading grammar spelling and uh, things that would fall under copy editing because uh, especially my fantasy novels you could have fantasy terms and mm -hmm. names of cities and slang and I've actually had to make like little reference resources where this is how I spell this this is what that means and then so you want to make do all the checking for the consistency throughout the books to make sure you're using the same words in the same ways throughout so the book. What is the, uh, just to throw this out, the 10 mm -hmm. books, that's amazing. Uh -huh. that's excellent talent. And oh, about 20 years, you said? It's, yeah, next year. So does it divide <laughs> out that it's comparable two years per book? Yes, yeah, some of them I definitely spent two, year, two to four years on in the beginning. Um, these I was able to write and produce in a little over a year each. Uh, they're a little shorter than some of my other works, and I just, I'm not trying to brag, but I do feel like I've gotten better at it, and I, I know I just have a little firmer hand on the rudder. So when it comes to your, <laughs> when it comes to your trilogy and you're driving yeah. the boat of uh, your fiction fantasy idea, mm -hmm. do you say, this is just a great story, I should cut this in three books? Well, it's actually my... <laughs> My epics can get so big that it can't be one book because <laughs> it just, it would be oh. like this. <laughs> right. I, and I, so I, then my task I, is to make each part of the series its own story because you want each one to introduce a problem, have a climax, deliver some satisfaction whether the reader goes on to other parts or not. And but so there's each story, and then there's the overarching story mm -hmm. that ties them all together. And the, in my series, um, I always uh, there will be a lot of characters, and as the series goes on, I interweave their stories, and it all comes to a conclusion at one big focal point with all the characters. Do you think a, a lot of how you came to do this was based more from your educational aspect of going to journalism in college at uh, California State, correct? Yeah, California State. That, or did it just come from your youthful concept of the huge glamorous story? Uh, I've always loved huge glamorous stories, mm -hmm. and so that is just part of me. The education for you know anyone who wants to be a writer should try and educate themselves, whether it's just you know I'm learning my grammar and everything. The journalism is more about, you know, trying to 
you know, get your details. Uh, you work a lot on transitions because you're always moving from scene to scene to scene and you know, you want to make it flow. You don't want it to be clunky like you're grinding the gears. So that's a lot of the technical stuff you'll work on in journalism and uh, trying to have, you know, a strong lead, you know, have every chapter, keep it going and then get into the nitty gritty. And then this isn't so much journalism because, you know, you read a news article and it's, it's done, where with each chapter, you want to start good and then be interesting. And then at the end, you want to make the person go, oh, got to keep going. Yeah, got to keep going. And cliffhanger is one technique, but it's not the only technique. So it's important not to overuse that. Yeah, not to I, I think, yeah. I don't know, if you, Steve, but there's really not a huge, huge... Uh, not, well, there is a huge audience for it, but I don't find that many writers being able to write a book that can cover so many different age brackets. Because I would have not a problem for my young teenager mm -hmm. to read this book because it keeps, it, it gives you a little idea, but it keeps it still on a very healthy um, aspect, little, little, yes, not too yes. sexual, I should say. Yeah, I mean, but, you know, I have romance and mm -hmm. sexual existences for my characters but it's not that I'm writing erotica right. it can appear in the story and it's part of it but it's not just like chapter after chapter it's just because the way I see it when I'm writing characters mm -hmm. especially if you're writing a saga where you're with this guy for seven years I mean people have girlfriends or boyfriends they get married they have kids things you know how can I write a story about someone for years of their life and they never you know, well, I found ever that go out on a date, you know, ever. <laughs> well, how you handled yeah, some of it, yeah. I thought was just brilliant because uh, some of it is could be a heavier subject or possibly something you wouldn't want your teenage writing. But the way you wrote it, you'd have to be older to understand what you were trying to say. Yeah, and especially in my Renas Werewolves and Renaissance series, I play a little bit because you know Renaissance literature, going back to Shakespeare, there's that bodiness yes. where you're like hinting at stuff. Uh, but mm -hmm. it's not too much in your face. So I have a little bit of that. And as you were saying, uh, appeal to different age groups, just from people emailing me over the years, uh, it really is all age levels. I've had teenagers really like it, I've had people my age, people in their 20s, people older than me, you know, because there's, you know, we're not the first generation that liked reading fantasy. So, you know, there's retirees out there and discover my stuff. And they like the ebooks because mm -hmm. they can make the font bigger. And in the book are different age brackets. Yeah, so. I, I definitely um, will, you know, I don't call myself young adult writer because a young adult book usually just really has young adult characters, right. maybe one older one, where I, I pull, I'll have characters, they'll be teens, they'll be 20s, they'll be older, you know, some, some uh, of the books have kids what, in them. Explain it again about young adult books. How's well, it? a young adult book for that genre, the majority of the characters will be young adults. They'll be teens, maybe 20. So that's kind of the formula there, where my books, there are young adult characters in them, but that's not the, the totality of yeah, it. But that's what not, I was... They'll be adult uh -huh. characters with adult problems. and That's where, where it comes in a... Uh, 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 um, a, a, a half cut uh, 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 um, where young adults, I mean, young adult books, when, when you do a genre, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I've noticed that they're trying to change it more, expand it more still. Mm -hmm. But when you have a book, they try to place it in, in an age bracket, and when you put it under young adults, you're like, well, what, what, what are you trying to say to a young They should just use uh, age bracket numbers and like you know, under it instead okay. of doing it because. There's, there's sections that I've, I've noticed that Amazon's changing theirs too as well, that there's sections, uh, uh, as a matter of fact, if you look under your books, or in, any books for that matter, they're starting to fine tune it themselves on these certain genres. Yeah, they have all these subcategories. Yes, and, 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 and when you first initially go to publish a book, mm -hmm. you don't have all those genres, you don't have them all. Yeah, they, but yet they're creating some for you in your behalf. Mm -hmm. So somebody's doing their homework. Or the other way around that is because of the technology when people go to purchase, mm -hmm. they're looking at it under a certain genre and the majority is actually fitting the categories for that book to sit in. Mm -hmm. Because that, like that 
we said young adults, and I'm going, uh, young adults at what age? Because you want to, you want older generations to be able to read it, but you don't want somebody that's 12 years old and says, Mama, look what I read, you know? And you're like, whoa, 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 because the genre is stuck in a loophole. Mm -hmm. So maybe they should change that. That, that like say what uh, uh, was it juvenile? Mm -hmm. uh, what, what is that? I like the G P G P G thirteen and oh my gosh, don't take your kid. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know well, you know it's funny you mention that because when I have people ask me, well, what kind of age group is this for? And I'll say, oh, I write at pretty much a P G thirteen level, yeah, and I have it. another series that I, I pretty much I'll call it an R because it, it's kind of raw, like Game of Thrones. A little more violent, a little more yes. sexy. I'm going to say, what is, what is the, uh, uh, um, I don't think we, I only saw, a, 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 last night uh, uh, we were watching uh, The Boy, okay, uh, uh, The Boy, which was, which has got a serious twist to it. Uh, 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 um, it was kind of interesting. It, it, it actually, it's kind of, it will start off misleading, but they deliberately did that. So, you, you know, that, to, to get you spoofed up on it. But it was PG-13. Mm -hmm. PG-13. And I'm going, PG-13? I said, they still have that? Because there's, there, there shouldn't be no PG-13. There's the, the PG, but they actually went to a, 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 a rated R, and they went to a rated R, a R something. And because everything now, no matter what you see, even on TV, uh, uh, just, just episodes. Episodes are done in rated R. Uh, mature audience, MA. There we go, MA. So we got PG, MA, and R. But now this PG, it's just, I think it's going PG, R, and MA is, they're not sure where to categorize it in. <laughs> well, there's a lot of mature adults also that are not mature. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So, and don't want to be. And don't want to <laughs> be. Don't wanna be. <laughs> so what's their classification? Don't know. Watch whatever you want. <laughs> yes, yes. Just pick your level. <laughs> <laughs> so, so when you, you know what? I, uh, um, you, whenever you're out there and you're going to pick out a book, okay, if your age, I mean, I don't know, I, I want to say 16 to be honest with you because there's a lot of them grown now. I mean, if they can, if they can smoke their... The, the e-cigarettes or whatever you want to call it, the cigarettes, e-cigarettes, or a drink or something like that, the way to, today is gone in the technology, then I, I, and the, uh, 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 the music industry, 16-year-olds mm. are, are, you know, it's like back in the day. If you go, if you go in the South, the 14-year-olds are like grown, and, and it shocks you, but it's scary. So the 16-year-old, but I ain't talking about playing around and that's stupid either, but you, you know what I'm saying, for adults, but be able to have uh, uh, an age bracket to read something more like, like, like in Philadelphia, when you're reading something that draws an interest, where you say like not too explicit as far as for the romance, mm -hmm. then I would say, sure, why not a 16-year-old or 17-year-old can read, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, to the aspect. Uh, no, if it has to be 18, which we already know at 18, because the... It, it, the and until they can get that in order, they need to understand the concept of, of the, 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 the human mind. Well, all I so hope is as children are growing up, they continue reading. Because with the computers nowadays, the video games, the that's what I was at, television, yes. I just want children to keep reading. So I think that's one of the most important things to press on uh -huh. every parent out there mm -hmm. and any individual that's around children to get them to read. And books are so entertaining now, exactly. I mean, pre-teen to read something like this when I was a child, whoa. Yeah, yeah, you know, yes, that's what, It would have kept I me mean, enthralled. What did you think about a, a Hamlet and Romeo and Juliet and stuff like that in our, in our younger days? How old were we when we read those books? We had to do them in high school. We they, were forced. Yeah. In high school, and, and what age? Oh, I was 18. 16. Oh, there Probably we go. For Thank Romeo you. and Julia. I remember I said, you like this one, it's teenagers. And at the end, I'm like, they killed each other. Yeah, they killed yeah. themselves. I, 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 I wanted them to live happily ever after. <laughs> yes, but yet, it was in our thoughts and everything. Yeah. So, and, and same with in poetry with Edgar Allan Poe. And, mm. you know, we, we went from Charles Dickinson all the way up to, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it's like, oh my goodness. I mean, look at, uh, no, I don't want to go there because, you know, uh, Wizard of Oz, when that house landed order, and you're like, oh my gosh. <laughs> They, they, you know, never, nevertheless, 
what we're getting at is that books like you have have an open, uh, 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 not that genre, but open age bracket. Mm -hmm. An open age okay. bracket where the schools can be able to utilize fine writing to appreciate mm -hmm. the writing of today. Mm -hmm. Okay, because generally they still go back and grab the old books from Hamlet, uh, 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 Henry VIII, and, and um, Romeo and Juliet from back then. And yet we have all these type of creative books that people need to be able to appreciate, not, uh, not, not just for the libraries, but in the schools themselves. To, to have a book, you know, you remember the class, they hand everybody the same book mm -hmm. and read it and see what they got out of it. And that's, the, that's what I was looking at earlier when I was looking at your books and I was thinking about that. I said, home, oh, this would be, this would be a good little, uh, 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 I started thinking about thesis and stuff. Uh -huh. I said, well, can we write a thesis out of her book? You could try. Uh, it's funny you mentioned that, that uh, one uh, family that I met at Grand Rapids Comic Con a couple years ago, and they had a teenage daughter, mm -hmm. and uh, she read Where Lord Thal, and uh, her dad read it too, and they really liked it, and she did a book report on it for Let's her see. English class, and she emailed it to me, because... And it, it was just amazing to see someone writing a book report about my book. That's exciting. And what she pulled out of it and what she, she had she to get say an a? about it. She did. That's why they wow. emailed me because normally she, uh, English, not that she was a bad student, but she wasn't, didn't usually get A's in that class, but she'd really gotten into this book and had a lot to say in her paper about it and got a high score on it. That See, awesome. and that's what I saw out of your work. And I, and I told my yeah. husband, I said, oh my yeah. God, I'm mm -hmm. somebody's homework. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> that is well deserved. That's yes. what I've read. That's what yeah. I saw. Compliment. A whole nother yeah. level inside your book that we, when, it, when, it, when, it, when a, a, a teenager can, can actually yeah. use it uh, uh, for school. Yeah. And a theme I've been working yes. with in this series is because, uh, you know, these people are outsiders. You know, Thal is obviously, he's a magical being, you mm -hmm. know, and in his era, he, he is considered of the devil. They want to kill him as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. And then uh, his love interest, she gets accused of witchcraft. I mean, she, she's just a lady, though. She doesn't have magical power. But back then, if they say you're a witch and then they torture you and get you to confess, you have magical devil powers. <laughs> and, you know, yeah. so it's very much now these people, they're outside of society. Yeah. They don't fit in. And, you know, a lot of young people, it's very easy good. to feel alienated no matter, you know, if you're what your social right. economic background or race is, you know, yes, especially origins, at that age, yes. you don't feel like you're part of society the way you want to right. be. It's easy to feel that way, especially if you're a weirdo like me. <laughs> oh. oh, no. Oh, what, what, well, back really, really, quick, nerds. really quick, why werewolves? <laughs> well, actually, um, I wanted to do kind of a familiar type of supernatural monster in this theory mm -hmm. series. And it's set in the Renaissance, early modern period, and that's a, for Europe, is a very big uh, time of change, of shifting from the old ways. Um, printing is coming on, and you know, for books to be circulating, especially in people's mm -hmm. native languages, that's like the internet back then. I mean, yes. that was a game changer. You know, people were starting to share their ideas and learn about new things, or, write crazy evil things like the Hammer of Witches, so you have your reference book for hunting witches. And um, the society also, technology is evolving, there's greater resource extraction, there, you know, cities are getting bigger, the ships are going all over the world, they're mm -hmm. exploring the world, there's colonial colonies, we're on the verge of a global uh, empires from Europe being built. And so the werewolf is about shifting, and uh, the era is shifting from, I've heard the medieval period called a very organic period. It's like, you know, the castle, it's supported by the resources that grow there, mm -hmm. where modern period is the cities pulling resources from all over the world. It's a much more technologically driven system, and so, uh, you know, he, the ideas I was working with in my mind is people were becoming more separate from the land and they're shifting into more technical urban society. I mean, there's very early stages of it. 
And Thal is the man, but he's also the animal. He still has that connect, total connection to nature. And he's able to shift between the two. So he mm -hmm. is a shifting being inside a society that's shifting into something new. Aren't we all? Mm, yeah. Very good. That is very good. Well, yes. <laughs> Yeah. Is that too overwhelming? Yeah, <laughs> actually, we're sort of out of time. But yeah, my I books, I like to have, you know, what I call the surface story, the action, what's going on, <laughs> and underneath, yeah. there's the, the subterranean <clears throat> levels that go down as far as you want to think about it. You, you know what? I, I would love to have you come back on the show again. Yes. Yeah, well, I mean, it's a turn right to Right here you. in Southern Michigan, you know. Yes. Uh, um, actually, I, yeah, I have back other, a total other ball of wax to talk about. Yeah, we'll have to, to do the other uh, series. Well, I'm flattered. I, like that. I, I would be available for that. Yes, I'm throwing that out there. Yeah, I'm out there. I think that's a very good idea. Okay. Better get another okay. book done, though. We don't want to rush this. This is perfect. Oh. <laughs> Can't rush perfection. I'm not going to put on a deadline on our book. <laughs> Come on, you're very creative. Yeah. You know what? And, and definitely, I'm glad to have you aboard. Oh, it's been you great know. meeting you and Michelle. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, it'll be something else. <laughs> but I, I tell you what, um, if nothing else, I tell you, we'll be. How about it? We'll be right back after this. You are awesome. You, you are totally awesome. You guys are awesome. Oh. Yeah. I, 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 I learned a lot. I don't know about you. I don't know. I, I actually like, learned. <laughs> go have me run around. Go. Well, know, I might not see tonight. I love, tonight, I love to wear. With, you know. Uh, I mean, I, I love the. Uh, uh, you know, I'm, I was stuck, and when you said that, I was thinking about uh, um, uh, 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 underworld. What was it called? Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are really cool stories. I like a that, lot yes, of those. Yes, yes, and, and I was thinking when you said Renaissance, I'm thinking. They did the combination, and I'm, I don't know, I'm, we want you back. Yes. And we want you to bring some more of your books, because I really want everybody to see it. As a okay. matter of fact, uh, um, when you get a chance, uh, again, we want you to go to her website and look at her books. Uh, uh, her name is Tracy... Uh, Falby. Thank Falby. you. Falby. Mm -hmm. See, I was going to say that. Yeah, Tracy Falby. And besides, as you know, you know, with women here, I'm not going to... But that's good. That's good. Amazon.com. 
She will be but, on there and all her books are listed. So you can go through and look at her first chronicles and the next two books leading up to her third chronicle that she's working on now. And when that's completed, that's when we hope to have her back, to have her talk about her other novels in case we didn't cover it all today. But I thank you. I thank you for tuning in and I thank you again. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. It was a pleasure. Yeah. All right, on that note, we'll see you next week. <laughs>